Alright guys, what's going on? Welcome to your next Android tutorial. And as I said last time, we're going to be working now on the async task loader. Or async task, which is one of the more awkward concepts, we'll say. It's, it's a funny class of Android, but it's very useful at the same time. It can be a bit difficult to get working. But um, here we're going to say, we're in our extends application object. And we're going to say public class. We're going to say uh, image downloader. Extends a y how do you spell a and that's obviously spelled incorrectly. Change to async task. That's it there. Okay. Now after async task, we need our three uh, properties. So we're just going to say void 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 for now okay you know the reason is I don't we're gonna have to keep these capitalized boom and of course we're adding unimplemented methods okay so this is our async task loader here and essentially what we want to do is I'm getting emails what we want to do is essentially load an image download an image in the background and then load it into the UI when we're done it's as simple as that. However, as you've seen with the run class oh, here, we just select the thread. Now we could use that to download an image, but how do we get that image into the UI? Because there is a rule in Android, and you can never break the rule. In fact, the app will crash if you try and do this. You can never modify the user interface from a second thread. Everything has to be done on the main thread if for the user interface. You can load stuff in the background, you can do background tasks, you can download stuff, you can fetch information from the internet, you can uh, you know, scale images in the background, but you can never, ever, ever modify the UI from a second thread. That is like the golden rule of Android. Now you'll notice here I have Pixel Enemy up, this is actually an app I'm working on at the moment, um, or working on an update for, and we're going to be using some code from this, this is just some code I've written. I'll leave that on screen if you're a minute there. It's uh, called public byte get image from URL and it takes in a URL string. Our string is URL and it just, um, I'll leave that there like that so you can see how it works. So you can copy that image if you want, but that's essentially an image downloader. You can use the Java X package, I think. I've never actually used that. But anyway, that's how you get an image downloaded. So what we want to do is we want to add another method here, okay? And we're going to add an uh, um, on post execute, and then we have void. I can never remember these async task methods, they drive me crackers. Um, I'm going to have to go check these out now in a second. Because these async task methods, async task drives me crackers, okay? It's one of the more complex methods, so I'm just going to check out what these methods are actually called on the document. Okay, so I've uh, added in a new method called protected void on post execute. So what we're going to do is we want to pass a URL into this method and then have it execute here. So these methods here, okay, are, are the two key ones. The do in background is executed, all the code in here is executed on a background thread. And then when the thread finishes executing, when the thread is finished executing, it will um, execute this method here, which runs on the main thread. So essentially, we can tell this to run this in the background and then execute on the other thread. Naturally enough. So it makes sense, doesn't it? What we do is we tell this to you know, find the image here, pass it into this method, and then execute. So essentially what we're doing here is we're passing a method, like anything returned here goes in here. So it's a little bit confusing, but we're going to put a string here, okay? String, okay? And then we're going to put in string here. You need to change it like that. And we're going to say string URL, okay? And return here, we're actually going to change this to bitmap 
we're going to return a bitmap that's going to be put into our image view. So we're going to say bitmap, bitmap. Okay. And then we have to import bitmap, <laughs> naturally enough. And then I believe it's this one here, so bitmap needs to be changed. Nope. That's the ticket, yes, that one there. Now the third parameter here is used for on progress updates, so you can have it change things as it goes along. And obviously here this return method is now needs to return a bitmap. When you see the code working, it's gonna work. So we're gonna use this image this uh, thing here, which is gets the image gets the data from a URL and as uh, an image into a byte array, and then we'll process that byte array. So uh, this is just a, a quick and dirty way essentially of getting our image ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to say bitmap return not bitmap return bitmap bitmap equals null for now and then we're going to say we're going to make a byte array and we're going to call this image data equals get image ah fucking hell from URL which is our method from below and we're gonna pass in the string of the URL that we're given. Now we haven't actually got this URL string here yet. Okay. So what this is doing here is, is this is telling us now look it's telling us that it's a string array. So see this dot 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 here? That means array, so if we get rid of that, however, it gives us an error. So this is one of the things of async task I don't understand, okay? I honestly don't understand this. Literally just gonna tell you what to do, and I know I said I'd try and teach us how I understand it, and I just don't get this. So we're quickly just gonna create a string called URL to equals URL zero to get the first parameter to get the first array part of that array so you can pass arrays of strings in here i believe and then we're just going to say url2 and now we're going to get that okay so now we've got our bitmap and we've got our image data we're going to quickly change over to a separate application this is code from another app i'm working on but essentially this doing background here we need to just say we're just going to copy and paste some code because I'm lazy. So now we've got our URL. Now we're going to actually create the image and scale it. All this is done in the background, don't forget. We can get rid of this bit here. And that's me making a fool of myself. But essentially, we're just creating a byte array input stream. And we're just... Uh, where's our image data? Which creates, takes in a byte array and creates an input stream. And then you can use the bitmap.createScale bitmap and the bitmap factor to code stream method to create our URL. So we're going to make this uh, 200 times 200. And this is code I've tested before. So, and then we want to return our bitmap, naturally enough. That's fair enough. So what we're doing now is, <coughs> if you haven't noticed, is that we are returning our bitmap. So what we're doing, all, all this here is doing, this is a method I wrote, you can do this any way you want, you can Google around for that. But essentially what this is, is it's taking, it's taking in a string and returning a bitmap. And that bitmap actually gets returned into this method. So all this is done on a second thread for us. And then this method here is going to be used to generate our, um, to load up our image. So we're gonna have to get a reference to our image somehow, aren't we? We need, we need a reference to get our image and we're actually going to create a constructor for this okay public image downloader okay and we're just going to say i am image view view we're just going to quickly create a, a constructor 
to make things a little bit easier. Change to constructor. Yeah, there we go. It's now a constructor. And then we're just going to uh, we're going to have an image view object up here. View image. And then we're just going to say image equals view, and then uh, image, and then view equals none to allow the garbage collector to get that set up. So we're just uh, setting our image to image. So then we're going to say image down here dot. Oh, damn, I actually can't think about it. I think it's a uh, set, bit, set image bitmap. That's it there. I couldn't remember for a second. My was brain farting. Anyway, so what we're doing now is, okay, we're creating our thing, passing our image view into the class. Then when we ex it extends this, then we're going to pass in our image view. Then our URL is going to be taken in, download the image in the background, create a scaled version of the image, and then set that to our image view. So of course we're going to need an image view naturally enough, uh, somewhere to stick it. So our class, or our layout, is our multi-threading layout. So we're going to go to multi-threading. Okay, and we're going to go to our, our graphical, and we're just going to add an image view in here. So we're going to say uh, layouts, images, media. Here's our image view object. And we're just going to put the, uh, the twist the, the logo here. You have to have a default one, and then we're just going to edit its ID to image view, or, uh, down loaded image, and it's OA, not AO. I'm very bad at spelling, not a great thing to have when you're programming. Okay, so now we've done that, so we're going to change this pause second thread. Um, we just go into our values and modify the string used for it. So here's our pause second. I'm just going to say uh, download image. Download image. And if you have a blob type in the database, you can actually store images in the database. So, if you change that, yeah. Download image, yeah. That'll change itself in a bit once it refreshes. In fact, I might just refresh it now. And that's not working. Yay. Anyway, so we have that. That's okay. So in our image th uh, multi-threading, we're going to get rid of all this. Or we can get rid of this part here. Okay. And the first thing we do is we're going to get a reference to our image view, as usual. Image view, we just called it image. image view and this is a activity so we can just say find view by id id dot and it's called downloaded image okay control shift o to, in, to take to get our import for image view grand so now what we're going to do is we're going to say app or we're going to say a uh, image downloader I think it's called. Image loader uh, equals m equals app dot new image downloader. I believe this is it for accessing the inner class. Yeah, I've spelled it wrong. Yeah, so we have to add the argument for our image view, so we're just going to type an image. Boom. And done. And then we're going to, now, in order to start the thread working, uh, image loader. Dot execute. 
and we still need our string parameters don't we we need our, our parameter string so we need a URL of some kind so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up I'll just find a suitable image so the image we're gonna find is this one here so I've copied and pasted this URL and it should be here like so boom so there's our uh, URL we just need to put that in like that to put in a string format and now when we press that button it'll execute this will uh, you know pass in our image view into the constructor and then we're going to execute and we've got our parameter which will then you know take in the URL string find it on the internet uh, get our byte array for our image data decode the byte array scale that image and then put it on the and then return the bitmap here which will then put it on our user interface so I'm going to start up the emulator and we'll see if it works. Oh, before I start up the emulator, while I'm starting the emulator, I want to show you something here. Uh, I got a very useful tip. If you wanted to start up faster, change the heap size to 128. I felt some, uh, someone actually commented that on a video and it's an amazing trick. It should, it should really help your uh, emulator start up a lot faster. Okay, so you have it now. So multi-threading. And download image and this image should change once it's downloaded. Oh <laughs> we got a bug. What a shock. Where the devil is it? I've made a, a quite a hilarious Android error. Um we're accessing the internet, aren't we? We need to add a permission. <laughs> um you know when you start up an app? or install an app on your Android phone or tablet and ask you for what permissions well we haven't added a permission for it yet mm -hmm. so we're just going to go into the manifest and we have to add a permission so just go permissions tab add permission name oh great So we'll just add our network permission. In fact, I'm too lazy to go find the, uh, the code first. I'm just going to uh, open up an app that I know has the permission in it. Let's see. Here's the manifest for another app I have. Let's see. Let's look for permissions. Yeah, uses permission. That's the one there. Boom. So we need to add this uh, permission. There's a blank one. But there we go. Uses permission. Android permission on internet done you have to do that or it just it just won't work obviously because the app can't access the uh, internet therefore you know the Android will block it because it didn't ask permission so it's installing and it should work now can't believe I forgot to have permission no whoopsie going back multi-threading download image and look well bam Check it out. We have our image has downloaded onto this device and been scaled correctly to fit, which is very nice. Now, of course, this is just displaying the image as is. What we could do is we could get rid of the scaling, just create the bitmap, and then the image view will do scaling for us. But as you can see, we downloaded our image. Easy peasy. <laughs> so that's uh, downloading stuff from the internet in the background. That's the async task. I'm sorry, this video is going to be long, but. The async task is a very useful tool for loading stuff in the background. A good example is that in an app that I've worked on, the Pixel Enemy app, the images in the list views are actually being handled on an app, a separate thread and scaled. Therefore, the list view is, you know, the UI is greatly speeded up. So, if something's going to take longer than half a second, you should definitely use async task loader or some sort of multi threading system to load stuff in the background and do stuff to, like that. But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed. Our next video will cover some new Android stuff as usual. And that's that.